Hello everybody, today we are going to be taking a look at the German M65 gas mask. Seems that a lot of my gas mask videos have been fairly popular recently, so I thought it was about time that we took a look at another one. So this mask was in service from 1965 all the way up until around 1999. It was used by all branches of the West German military, and by all of the German military after the reunification. There was also a civil service version of this mask called the M65Z. I don't have an example of that here today, but they are very, very similar. So now let's take a look at the mask itself. So right away, you're going to notice that this mask is in pretty rough shape, and that's because it's been stored in its container for 50 years. I will say, though, that it seems to be made out of a less pliable and thicker rubber than most other masks I've handled, although the pliability could just be uh, on account of its age. Just something I thought I'd point out. Anyway, let's take a look at the features. So you have a plastic cover over your exhale valve, your inhale valve down here where you'd screw in the filter. This is a standard 40 millimeter NATO thread. Any NATO filters will fit on this mask. You have plastic lenses. Then if we look on the back, you have a five point harness with some nice texturing on the inside. That way it won't slip around on your head too much. Underneath, this big long strap, and it took me a while to figure out what this was, but I am pretty sure this is just for wearing it around your neck when you wanted to have the mask ready to go, so not in its container, but you also didn't need to have it on your head. You could wear it around your neck with this strap. So I have done my best to move the strap out of the way so you can see the interior of the mask. You can see you have a nasal cup right here, and your air, when it comes through the filter, would be routed underneath the nasal cup and then inhaled through these two black valves on the sides. And then you'd exhale it through the front and that valve right there. And that's covered with kind of a mesh material. On the side here, we have your manufacturing stamp. It was made by Draeger in 1970. I'm unsure of what the G and 12 mean, but we do know that 70 is the year of production and you have your Draeger stamp right above it. Also, you have a three on the forehead of the mask. That is your size. I believe that three was the smallest size and one would have been the biggest. Here's our filter. And like I said before, it has 40 millimeter threads. Now I have left this example completely sealed up. See the little tape on the bottom. And basically what that says is you remove the cap at the bottom and then unscrew the cap at the top before using. And you've got this neat little seal right here on the string that says Dragovac Ludbeck. Who knows if I'm pronouncing that right? I tried, that's what matters, right? Anyway, anyway, if we take a look at the markings on the top, you have your national or NATO stock number. What I believe to be the, well, let's see if you can see that, the year and month of production, so September of 1979, and another Draeger logo. Now, whenever you talk about gas mask filters, the question of the day is, is it safe to use? And I have seen conflicting reports on the safety of these filters. Some people saying, oh, this particular type of filter is completely fine if it was made after this date. If it was made before it, maybe not, but there is no concrete information, so I obviously don't want to tell you it's safe to use unless I am 100% sure about that. But, like I said earlier, the mask does have standard 40 millimeter NATO threads, so just go pick you up a modern filter, a M2A1 American filter, something like that, just so you can have that peace of mind and know that you are not inhaling any old chemicals or minerals. So here is what is probably the most exciting part of this set, and that would be the canister that the mask was stored in. Now, if you know anything about German gas masks, you'll know that the Germans started this practice of storing their masks in canisters all the way back in World War I, and by the time that this mask came around, they were in kind of a transitional period. So the M65 was actually issued in both these canisters as well as bags. But I will say that on the surplus market, at least here in the United States, you don't tend to see the canisters all that often. Normally the mask will either have a bag or not have any storage solution sold with it at all. So the canister itself is just a very simple injection molded design. It's just a hard gray plastic. You have your lid, a little clip that just snaps right into there. Very easily unhook it, open it up. You'll notice that there is no gasket in the lid. I'm wondering if there originally would have been one and it's just rotted out or gotten removed over the years. I'm not sure about that. 
I will say, you see all that white oxidation in there? When I got this set, this entire canister was covered in that. And it wipes away very easily with a paper towel. I'm assuming it's just due to age. But pretty much all the other examples I've seen online for sale have this oxidation. You don't even need water to remove it. Just get you a dry paper towel and it'll wipe right off. Now let's take another look inside and you will see this little plastic compartment in the lid with a guy's name in it. I'm assuming the man it was originally issued to. The neat thing about this is looks like it was written on some sort of police stationery from 1974. Neat little thing to find whenever you buy stuff like this. It's always nice to find little surprises like that. Now the World War II version of this canister had a spare lens compartment up here. I'm not sure if this would have held I don't think it would have held spare lenses because you can't replace the lenses in this mask. It may have held like a cleaning wipe or something, or it may be for exactly what this man used it for here, just for putting a name tag in it. I'm not 100% sure about that. Now, here's your straps, and these are used just like the World War II counterpart. This goes across your torso, and then this would be hooked into your belt at the back, so this would be worn horizontally across your back, kind of like that. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm working on getting some more videos out as quickly as I can. If you'd like to see a video on something, leave a comment, and I will do my best to get around to it. If you have any questions, send me an email. And if you enjoyed this and would like to see more like it, consider subscribing. My goal is to hit 1,000 by the end of the year. No idea if that's possible, but your help would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.